Hey, how's it guys? Right, so I think this is going to be a pretty interesting tutorial. For this video, we're going to learn how to use Playwright to script Google Maps in Python. Google Maps is one of the most difficult websites to script just because there's no organized structure from the results. So for instance, if I search for restaurant, restaurants in Chicago, now here I have a list of results. So if I examine the element for each element block, so for example, we know this element here, represent this rack right here. Now, the reason Google Maps is such a, a, such a, a difficult website to scrape is because if we look at the attributes, so every single attribute is, uh, is a key. And Google Maps constantly changes the key. So you cannot have a single script that will always work. So the script may work today, but it may um, not work in tomorrow. So to create the scraper, I'm going to break down the process into two steps. The first step is we're going to download the results list into a HTML page. And when we save the HTML page, we're only going to save this table right here. We're not going to save the entire page. That way we still retain the records for each result items from the list. And the second step is we're going to scrape the information and convert the items into a JSON object. Now, because the attribute IDs will always get updated. So to scrape the data into a table or a JSON record or any data format that you're looking for, I'll be using OpenAI's API to do the scraping. And you can use any generative AI to uh, perform this task. All right, so first launch your terminal. And we're going to install Playwright. So type pip install Playwright. And once Playwright is installed, we need to download the drivers. And we can do that by run the command Playwright install. Now I'll create a blank Python script. For the import statement, I'm going to import time from Playwright sync API. I'm going to import sync Playwright. Then I'm going to define my variables, base URL, which is going to be the URL pointing to Google Maps. Next, I'm going to define my search query. In this case, I want to search for bakeries in Chicago, Illinois. All right, so if we look at this code block here, so I'm doing here is that I'm creating a Playwright instance. Then I'm creating a Chrome browser instance and can use different browser uh, like WebKit or Firefox. And make sure that you set the headless uh, mode to false to display the browser. Then I want to create a context instance. A context is basically an isolated environment to store cookies and sessions uh, data. And from context, we're going to create a new tab using that new page method. And I'll name the object as page. So page is going to represent a tab. Then we're going to navigate to Google Maps website and we're going to uh, wait until the page is fully loaded. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this code block to launch the web page. And that's going to take us to Google Maps homepage. Now I want to type something in the search box, which is going to be this input field. So here I'm going to provide the expat query to point into the input field. Then I'm going to enter my query using the fill method. Then I'm going to press enter. And I'll go ahead and run these three lines to populate the input. To locate the element here that containing the results, I already defined the expat query. So if I take this expat query, if I do a, here, let's go back to Firefox. If I put the expat query here in the uh, search field and enter, it's going to navigate to this element here. If we look at the attributes, we have row is equals to feed. And from this element here, we have child elements, 
that containing each uh, restaurant in this case. So this uh, each record fell under this element here. You can see this is the parent element and these are the child elements. So what I'm doing here is that I'm defining the X packery to locate this uh, list element here. Then using wait for selected, I can check whether or not if this uh, element exists. Then I want to create a reference to the uh, list block element using page that query selected. Then I'll pass the X packery. Then I need to set the focus to the uh, target element using scroll into view if needed. Now to scroll the page, we can press the space key to, uh, to the next page. So here I'm going to insert a while loop. I'm going to create a flag to indicate that I want to score the page. And here I'm setting the condition to while this condition is true, then keep pressing the space key. Because I don't want Google Maps to block my IP, so I'm going to wait 2.5 seconds until I run the next iteration. And here I'm installing a check to check if I'm at the bottom of the page. And if the condition is met, then I'm going to press the space key one more time. Then I'm going to set the keep scoring flag to false. Then save this element here, this uh, list block element here into an HTML page. Then I can close the context browser and play right objects. All right, so let me terminate everything. And I'll run the script by itself. So right now in my project folder, I do not have the HTML page. So let me go ahead and run the script. And it may take a while for the script to finish. And I'm going to speed up a little bit. Looks like the script is finished. And right here is the HTML page. Let's open the page. Now, as we can see that from the HTML page, we do not have the entire Google Maps page that like we saw before, like this view here. The only thing we have is the results, which represent this element here. Now that's going to be step number one, which is to download the HTML page as the raw data. The second step is we're going to create a parser to parse the information. In this case, I'm going to use OpenAI's API. Now here I'm going to get my API key first. So I'll go to dashboard, then I'll go to API keys, and I'll create a new key. To parse the information, there's one more library that I forgot to install, which is the Beautiful soup library. And we can install the package using pip install beautiful soup for enter. And to use OpenAI's API, we can use OpenAI's package. So we can run the command pip install OpenAI. All right, so for this module, I'm actually going to name the script parser.py. I should also do maps underscore parser.py. For the import statement, I'm going to import JSON from BS4. I'm going to import beautiful soup. And from OpenAI, I'm going to import OpenAI. All right, so here let's go ahead and initiate OpenAI's client instance. And I'll define my API key here. And I'll pass the API key when I create my OpenAI's object. Now for the parser module, I'm going to first of all create two functions. The first function is going to load the HTML file and return as a beautiful soup object. Then I'm going to create another function called extra text elements. And this function is used to extra text given the elements. And to use the function, we'll pass the beautiful soup object. Then we'll specify the tag and attributes. 
And to organize the text string or beautiful soup string into a JSON record, or you can uh, convert that into a CSV file. I'm going to create a function called generate JSON prompt. So from the prompt, I'm going to say, convert the following list into a JSON object with each record based on this JSON record schema. This is going to be the JSON record schema. So we're going to extract information such as the business name, rating, reviews, price, category, location, hours, services, and actions. So actions are basically the things that you can do directly on Google Maps. So sometimes you can order food online from Google Maps, so you can uh, make a booking from Google Maps directly. And to ensure that the output is going to be returned as a JSON object, you will reply only with the JSON itself and no other descriptive or explanatory text. Then we're going to provide the input. And for the input, it's going to be the, uh, the HTML uh, text stream. And to do the OpenAI API call, we're going to use this function, get OpenAI response. We're going to pass OpenAI client object and the prompt. So I noticed that using GPT 3.5 doesn't always extra all the records. And I believe that is because uh, 3.5's uh, capability is not powerful enough. So I recommend you use GBT 4.0 or GBT 4, which is a lot more powerful and more capable of extracting large amounts of information. I'm setting the max token to 4,000, and here's the prompt. And we're going to send only one response. And I'll set the temperature to 0.1. And for the response, we are going to retrieve the message content and use Stripe to remove the extra spaces on both ends. Now, just in case, if the output is returned as a markdown format, then we're going to remove the code tag. Now, that's going to be all the functions that we need to create. And for the entry point, I'm going to create a main function. Here, I'm going to load the HTML file. Then I'm going to extract the text. And it's going to be the tag and the attributes. Then I'm going to create a list to hold the records. Now, because there's a limitation on how many characters that you can provide. So just to be safe, I'm going to provide certified records at a time. Then I'm going to call the generate JSON prompt and I'll provide the input list. And the input list is only going to contain the text string for certified records. Then I'll put a message running. Then I'll run the prompt using get open air response. And I'll pass client and prompt. And from the response content, we're going to use json.loads to convert the response content into a JSON object. And I'll name the output as data. Now, just to be safe, let me go ahead and also install pandas. I noticed that in my script, I have a procedure to translate the JSON object into a CSV file. So for this print statement, I just want to make sure that I'm getting certified records from the response. Then I'm going to append the JSON records to the record set. And here I want to also import pandas package. Oh, it's PD. Now we can create a data frame by passing the JSON record. By passing the JSON record set. In this case, it will be a dictionary. And from DF, we can save the output as a CSV file using the to CSV method. And we'll provide the file path and the encoding, and I'll set the index to false. Now to demonstrate, I'm going to run the script. Let's look at the print statements here. 
So for the first response, the reason why we're getting 32 records is because the headers. And I believe that the other two batches is also the same reason. Now, if we look at the CSV file, and I think that should contain 100 records based on the allocation. Yeah, so here if we look at the record count, we have 101 row, but if we take out the header, it's going to be 100 records. And which match to the, uh, the loop here. Now I just want to make sure that we're getting all the records in the correct format. So here we have the name, business name, rating, reviews, price, category, location, hours, services, and action. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover for this tutorial, just to show you how we can use Playwright and generative AI to uh, script Google Maps. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.